Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I have the Udo X86 Ultra to do a little review on. We're gonna check out the specs and do some gaming performance. I did some previous videos on the Udo Advance Plus, but the Ultra has more RAM at eight gigabytes and a better CPU. All these boards look exactly the same. The only difference I notice are some numbers on the board themselves. On the left is the Udo Ultra. On the right is the Udo Advance Plus. In this video, I'm going to go over the specs of the Udo Ultra, and I'm also going to test out some gaming performance using a bunch of Steam games. This is the most powerful Udo x86 board that they offer, and it's also the most expensive one, coming in at $267 US on their website. For the CPU, you get the Intel N3710 Celeron processor up to 2.56 GHz, 8 GB of DDR3L dual channel RAM, it's soldered to the board so you cannot replace it, the GPU is an Intel HD 405 up to 700 megahertz. Storage, 32 gigabyte eMMC storage built into the board, but it also offers a standard SATA connector. I've tested a desktop hard drive, which is a 3.5 inch mechanical drive, works fine, 2.5 inch laptop drive, and a 2.5 inch SSD. All of them work perfectly with the Udo X86. I've tested this on the Ultra and the Advanced Plus. The board also has an M.2 Key B SSD slot and a micro SD card slot for more storage. So there's tons of storage options for the Udo X86. It comes standard with gigabit ethernet, three USB 3.0 type A ports, one HDMI and two mini DisplayPort++ plus plus connectors. So it does support up to three displays at one time. Udo does market this as the world's most powerful maker board. So you're not just getting a mini PC. There's a lot of other stuff included here like a built-in Intel Quark SE Core 32 megahertz CPU, two UART ports, and it is Arduino 101 compatible. So it does work with Arduino compatible sensors and things like that. There's the pinouts on the board. Six axis combo sensor with accelerometer and gyroscope. As for operating systems, it does support Windows 10, Windows 8.1, and Windows 7. Also any Linux distribution for x86, and there's some builds of Android that work with this board also. I also have a bunch of accessories for this board here. I have the acrylic case that they offer. Now I put both of my antennas for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the bottom of the case. Also received the optional fan, 128 gigabyte M.2 SSD and the Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this thing together. Like I said, I put my antennas on the bottom of the acrylic case just to keep them out of the way. This is the fully assembled product here. I have the fan, the SSD, and the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth dongle, plus the acrylic case, all in place, ready to go. I think it looks pretty cool. Now I've already installed Windows 10 on the SSD. We're gonna move over there now and test out some PC games. If you want this thing for media playback, it's gonna work fine. Kodi plays great, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, whatever your flavor of video playback is, this thing will definitely do it. The main thing I want to see here is if it will handle older PC games. This is a very low powered CPU. It only pulls up to, I think, seven watts. So let's go ahead and see if it can play some games. All right, so here we are at Windows 10 Pro. This is an unactivated version. You have to buy a key for this. It doesn't come with Windows installed. As you can see, we have the Intel 3710 at 1.6 gigahertz, but it does turbo up to 2.56 when you put a good load on it. I do have that optional fan installed on the CPU heatsink. You can control it through the BIOS, so it's only gonna come on when it is needed. It won't be running full time. Just to show you, we do have the Ultra here. This is eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. We have 5.5 gigabytes free. I have a bunch of games I wanna test, like Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Rocket League, Skyrim, Half-Life 2, Counter-Strike, and Team Fortress. Let's go ahead and get into it. First game, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. All right, so for some reason I had to go to window mode on this game, it just wouldn't scale correctly with this Intel GPU. I'm at 800 by 600 resolution and everything is on the lowest setting. I tried 720p, but it would run at 30 to 40 FPS and it's pretty much unplayable like that. I do have the FPS listed in the top left hand corner. Just chose random characters here and I've never used MODOK in this game ever. I don't think I've ever picked him as one of my characters. Oh, 
So as you can see, most of the time it's at 60 FPS. It does dip down, but I haven't seen it go down below 50. Definitely playable at this speed, but the resolution kind of makes it pointless. Next up, we got Rocket League at 720p, all low settings. I don't play this game. I've played it a few times in videos doing a demo like this, so these guys are going to be mad because I'm just going to be running around here. FPS is listed up in the top left-hand corner, and it's not as bad as I thought it would be. 30 FPS is totally playable on a game like this. Here we have Elder Scrolls Skyrim, 720p, all low settings. There are a lot of mods that you can do to make this run even better. You might be able to hit 60 FPS if you install some of the mods, like the shadow mods, rendering distance, and stuff like that. No mods are installed. This is all low, 720p. So as you can see, the game is playable. It will drop down below 30, but like I said, there are tons of performance mods that you can install on a game like this. Next up, I'm actually pretty disappointed with this game here. This is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. I have everything on low and set to 720p. The game is unplayable. This is actually the first time I've ever played this game. I've played Counter-Strike Source and the zombie ones before, but never Global Offensive. I just bought it today to test out. Really horrible performance on the Udo X86 Ultra. It'll just get worse with more people on screen and a lot of action going on, so... Like I said, you can't use this to competitively play this game here. Half-Life 2, Episode 2, 720p, all low settings, runs fantastic. Now the FPS will dip down when there's a lot of particle effects on screen. It's few and far in between in this game, but it does happen. 60 FPS is really good for a little board like this. I know it's an older game, but this is still a great game to play today. And in my opinion, it is perfectly playable on the Yudu X86 Ultra. And the final game I tested, Team Fortress 2. 
it looks like it's running good, but when we get into action, you'll see how far it does dip down. This is, um, in my opinion, unplayable for a game like this. Now, if this was a single player game, yeah, I could get by at 30, even 25 FPS. But when you're playing competitively against other people, having it drop down that low really sucks. So overall, the Udo X86 Ultra does run a lot better than the Advanced Plus version. I did test the Dolphin emulator, which is GameCube slash Wii, and my benchmark is Soul Calibur 2. It runs at 30 to 40 FPS, so a lot of those games are going to be unplayable. Super Mario Sunshine runs fine at 30 FPS. That's what the game originally ran at. N64, SNES, NES, Dreamcast, they all run fine. You have to use different emulators to get them running, but they work perfectly on this board. If you're interested in seeing an emulation video using this board, let me know in the comments below, and I'll try my hardest to get one put together in the next few days. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.